I was called upon to use the dark arts of necromancy to reanimate a farmer. Unfortunately, since joining the undead, he has developed very bad manners. But it may be because, well, he was raised in a barn. Like with many stories involving the Droger, this story is rather uncomfortable, but the story of Aron and Asmund is known as particularly vivid. In my retelling, that's what I've attempted to stick to, so this is probably not for the squeamish, but it is one of the more descriptive records of a Droger. The interesting thing about this Droger is that there are two attestations, and I've combined elements of both stories for this retelling while sticking to the details. This is written about in a saga from the uh, late Icelandic manuscripts, as well as recorded by Saxo Grammaticus, who typically shies away from discussing the supernatural, or at least explains it away somehow. But, but he included this horrific story of a man buried alive with the undead. Which leads me to believe maybe something happened down there in the grave. Asmund and Arun were the closest of friends since childhood. They had each other's back. They went on adventures together and they would split their treasure evenly between them. And they had amassed great wealth together. As close friends and a wealth of honor between them, they profited together. Arun and Asmund were both great fighters and promised never to test their skills against one another because they figured they would both die if they ever did. They swore an oath of brotherhood with one another, that they would avenge the death of whoever might die first. And as part of their pact, they vowed that if one of them were to die, that the other should spend three days in the grave with him. One day, Arun fell ill and died. And Asmund went through with the pact, bound by his oath. He raised a burial mound with a spacious interior. Arun's body was prepared for burial, and when it came time for the funeral, Arun was placed in the grave seated in a chair next to his treasure and weapons and in full armor. Along with him was placed a hound, a hawk, and a horse in full gear. Asman was lowered into the grave by a rope, bringing his own chair and food for the three days that he was to spend within the mound. Torches lit the inside of the mound with a soft firelight. Asmund sat in his chair and looked over at his friend, now dead, he raised a toast in honor of his fallen brother and had his first meal in the grave, after which he nodded off. He woke suddenly. The fires were still going. A ghastly stench had filled the room. But when he looked over at Arun, he saw that the chair was empty. Asmund stood up and noticed that Arun was hunched over in the corner. As Asmund crept closer, he noticed the corpse of the hound, half-eaten. He could hear gnashing and chewing from Arun in the corner, and the stench only grew stronger. Asmund took another step towards Arun, and the chewing stopped. Arun stood, turned to look at Asmund and stared blankly at his sworn brother. He dropped the remains of the hawk, and then walked back to his chair. He sat back in the position that he had been earlier, as if he had never moved. Asmund spent the uh, second day staring at his friend. He remained there, a corpse, unmoving. The fire from the torches caused shadows to dance around the room, and Asmund would have thought himself mad had he not the remains of two animals lying on the floor, testifying to what he saw. Nevertheless, as the second night approached, Asmund found himself nodding off once more. He awoke again in the night, this time to the shuffling of armor. And he looked over at Arun and saw him. he was still sitting in the chair. And Asmund breathed a sigh of relief. But breathing in, 
I could smell the same stench from last night again. Asbin watched as Arin's fingers began to move. And he pushed himself out of the chair and stood, and his head turned toward Asmund and looked upon him with the same blank stare as before. Arin moved toward the horse, which inched away from him, spooked, and Arin grabbed hold of the horse, and Asmund watched in horror as Arin ripped the horse into pieces. He sank his teeth into the horse flesh, and blood streamed down his face as he gorged. Arin then turned to Asmund and locked eyes on him with the same blank stare as before. Asmund's heart was pounding, and his body was frozen in fear. He watched Arin pick up a leg of the horse and walk toward him dragging the horse's body behind him. Arin leaned down and gripped the horse's flesh and pulled. With inhuman strength, he ripped a chunk of flesh from the body and then held it out to Asmund, offering it to him. Asmund was frozen. He couldn't speak, couldn't move. And Arin jerked his hand offering the meat again. Asmund simply shook his head and then nodded toward his own food with another meal remaining. Arun shrugged and then lifted the meat to his own mouth, gorging himself on the flesh. Asmund awoke. He must have passed out. Arun was back in his chair, still like a corpse. At least, how a corpse is supposed to be. Asmund paced across the room and had his final meal. One night left in the grave to fulfill his oath. And he looked around the room at the carcasses of the animals. He toasted his friend one last time and then went back to his chair. And he watched his friend, his sworn brother, now a droger, who remained unmoving. As the day wore on and night approached, fatigue came over him. He continued to stare at the corpses around him, noticing that there weren't any animals left. He wondered if he had just descended into madness, and he felt himself nodding off. He decided not to fight it. In the morning, he will have fulfilled his oath, and he could leave this cursed place. It was the stench that brought Asmund to wake as he looked into Arun's eyes. The droger was standing over him, his pale face covered in dried blood chipping in flakes, especially around his mouth. That blank stare was there again, looking straight through him. Asmund shifted in his chair, very suddenly, very alert. Before he could even consider his next move, the Draugr's hands grasped his head, grabbing hold of him, and Asmund struggled as the Draugr's mouth snapped at him, biting at his flesh. The creature's nails scratched across his face. Asmund kicked and struggled and pushed against the Draugr's arms, but the Draugr's mouth bit into his ear, chewing away at the side of his head, held down with that same inhuman strength as before. Willing forth all of his strength, Asmund kicked the Draugr, who ripped away his other ear as he fell, leaving mangled flesh dangling from the sides of his head. Asmund ran to the other side of the tomb as Arun struggled after him. Asmund stumbled towards Arun's empty chair, disoriented, but then he saw, next to the chair, Arun's weapons. He grabbed his sworn brother's sword and pulled it from the scabbard, turning just as the Draugr lunged toward him. Asmund swung the sword, chopping off his brother's head at the neck. Both body and head fell to the ground, and the head rolled and looked back up at him with a horrific moan. The body struggled, trying to find a way to stand back up. Asmund had had enough. He kicked the head over to the body and then grabbed a torch. 
and he stabbed the torch into the body of the Dogger, and it caught fire immediately. Shrieks and groans came from the flames as the Dogger clawed at the air, trying to find Asmund. Flames consumed Auron, and finally he collapsed, unmoving. Slowly his body descended to cinders, including the head, which stared blankly at Asmund the entire time, moaning away as he burned. Asmund threw down the torch and grabbed the treasure, payment for this cursed ordeal. He went to the rope that had lowered him in and grabbed hold of it, calling upward to be pulled out. He'd fulfilled his damn oath. The men above hauled him out of the grave. Finally, Asmund saw the morning light and he cried out in relief. But when the men saw him, they ran in fear. They saw a man gray as ash, a torn face, and covered in blood oozing out of the sides of his head. Surely, they thought, this was a droger. So, let me know what y'all think of that one. In both of the sources that mention this story, it's a little snippet described, and then the story moves on from there. But both accounts from very different sources mention Asmund trapped in the grave with a droger with vivid and similar detail. And sometimes in history, you come across strange little stories like this. And this is one that I find genuinely scary. But maybe that's because it's a smaller, more personal story. And I, I tend to prefer those kind of stories myself. With the three funerals of Thorolf Twistfoot, I summarized a far more detailed story. And in this retelling, I took what was a handful of paragraphs from two sources and expanded upon them with the intention of keeping to the spirit of the original sources and without deviating from the details of the historical record. So let me know if you prefer one of these approaches or maybe you like both of them. If you want to find the original tales, however, and I highly advise reading them, the sources that contain them will be listed in the video description. But with that, hail to my patrons for making this content possible. It's good to have people at your back. If you like this story, be sure to check out The Three Funerals of Thorolf Twistfoot as that droger escaped the grave. And hit the like and subscribe buttons before they reanimate and kill us all. The sacred bell next to the subscribe button offers protection. Maybe. There's only one way to find out. And remember to find a way or make one. And quite frankly, I don't like Ocean very much. It kind of terrifies me. Ocean is something to fear and respect. Ocean has taken many lives, especially of fishermen, of explorers,